NBA fans, what's good? You are now rocking with the best. Ro Parrish here at Studio B. It is Playoff Central Live presented by AT&T 5G. You've just witnessed the Utah Jazz go up one game to nothing against the L.A. Clippers. And I have two of the most outstanding basketball minds here to break it all down. The all-star, the champion, Steve Smith, the coach of your next basketball team in the NBA. That is Earl Watson, your favorite basketball team. He's going to be the head coach. Just trust me on that with his basketball intellect. But we just saw that last possession. We saw the defensive scramble drill going on with the Utah Jazz as they get the victory. Smitty, your thoughts on that last possession as the Clippers tried to tie the game up? All right, look at the team right there. There's one thing about playing in Jazz Nation. I knew with that lead in the first half, they wasn't safe because that energy in that building that Coach Sloan built just gives you a different edge. Yeah, we saw earlier in that game, they missed 20 consecutive shots. 15 of those shots were three-pointers. Then in the second half, that defensive intensity. Gobert didn't have a block until midway through the third quarter. Then he finishes the game with three as Utah comes up big defensively. But then offensively, Donovan Mitchell. We hear the chatter all season. We see him and Shaq go back and forth and kind of challenge them. And he's de definitely answered the bell. 45 points tonight, his fourth career playoff game going over 40 points, tying Carl Malone for the Utah Jazz all-time playoff record. Earl, just seeing what he did offensively and, and being able to carry this team with Mike Conley out tonight, what were your thoughts? Watching him on television does him no justice. You have to go to the game to see him to appreciate his speed and explosiveness. He's not a tall guard. He's 6'1", but he has strong base, big shoulders. He has strength behind his, his explosive nature and power. He can shoot the ball beyond a three and Smitty. I don't know if I've seen anyone as explosive in a small box the way he dribbled left, right, left, right, and finds an angle to get to the basket. And his finishing is above the rim, under the rim, and kind of unorthodox when he goes right hand, right, you know, right, right leg, right yeah. hand layups. He, he's very crafty around the rim, and it's difficult to time blocking his shot. He has a power forward mentality to me. I think one thing I love about it is he's always square, dribbling the basketball. Usually a guard, he plays with it, but he's in and out. But he's always square, and then he's, he's okay with going through your shoulders. And like you said, is he's never bumped off balance. I mean, most of his things is now he's square. I'm right here with you. When I go, I'm still square. And then I'm through you and at you. And that's the one thing I like. A lot of guys go through you, then they want to go around you. He's always square. He's always on balance. I look at him as one of those players. It is extremely hard to take away. These dribbles is, I'm toward, I'm, none other than that is, all these young guys out here to be able to take that many shots to take that many have them but use his rate earl that's huge for me and all obviously we know how close it is and how much they talk to each other but somebody that good is still picking people's brain usually you start to feel yourself i've arrived he doesn't feel like he's arrived yeah i don't know donovan that mel that well but every time i've been around him is he's very humble and seems mm -hmm. to be very open and to, to learning and d wade of course part of the ownership group group now with utah we saw him on the sideline Earl, when you have somebody like that who's a legend, a future Hall of Famer, first ballot, who's been to these games and been in these situations. It's before the injuries. Mm -hmm. If Eric Gordon would have got drafted to a better organization, this is who he would have been. So when you have that situation and you have a D-Wade, you have an owner who actually knows the game, which is rare in this league, it kind of gives you confidence. D-Wade can give him insight that not even Quinn can give him because D-Wade's been on that court and lived in those moments with the ball in his hand, going down the stretch, closing games in the playoffs. So when we go to the other side, the Los Angeles Clippers coming off that game seven, I know that was taxing if you think about it. That was a longer series than maybe some might have expected. Paul George struggling to get his shot together. Had 13 in the fourth quarter, but really couldn't find his shot earlier. What were some of the things that stuck out, stuck out to you about the Clippers that you saw that they can improve upon? Well, I think for them is they're going to have an adjustment. Obviously, you, you wanted to come in and win this game, and obviously it sent a message. But you lost this one, but I love what T. Lou has done. He pushed another button tonight to Marcus Cousin. Came in, didn't play, play well his few minutes. And I think also Luke Kennard has been able to play well. He's trying to find the rhythm of this, and T. Lou's one of the masters of being able to manage, adjust, manage, adjust. He's one of those guys, I'm just not going to run to the race. I'm going to just keep plotting, keep plotting. And then I think for him is... He's going to figure it out, and I think this game is going to be beautiful for him. I, this is what I love about the game. I just want to be a fly on the wall with the coaches with the talking about the adjustments because that's the game within the game. When you're a player, yes, you know what kind of adjustments you're going to make, but as a coach, I got to tell Earl what kind of adjustments I think. He's got to tell me, and we got to be on the same page, and that's the beauty about basketball when you have a coach-player relationship.
That's the mental aspect. Earl, I want to ask you about the physical aspect coming off that game seven. We saw it seemed like they had a lot of energy early. Do you think that energy faded away? What, what do you think happened with the Clippers towards the end of the game? You still playing at altitude. Like when I played in Utah, we knew if we ran hard and ran early and hit it first, we would catch teams in the second half, especially going in the fourth and last six minutes of the game. Denver is the same way when I played in Denver. So maybe that altitude caught them. But the second time they come into that arena for game two, they will have their wind underneath them. They'll be ready. They'll be mentally focused. And I grew up with T. Lou. We grew up in the same gyms in, in high school. He's crafty. He's moving it around. He's talking to Chauncey. He's looking at different ways. And Smitty, I really think he threw more players out there because he knew the altitude would catch them going down the stretch in the fourth quarter. Mike Conley didn't play in this one. He had that hamstring injury that kept him out for 21 games earlier in the season. Re-injured that in the last game of the last series. Smitty, how do you think Utah handled himself not being able to have Conley in the lineup tonight? Well, it was a lot on Donovan Mitchell. I mean, you, you just look at it. He played 36 minutes, but it's not just the minutes. It's everything he has to do. It's going to have to be somebody else. And I thought Jordan Clarkson came in, gave him a lift, didn't shoot well. You don't really look at percentages right now in the playoffs. It's just to get it done, get a win. I think there's going to have to be more of Joe Ingles, more of Bogdan Donovan. And I'm not talking about scoring, just taking something, a load off of Donovan Mitchell because at this pace, I'm not saying he can't do it, but I, if I'm T. Lou and the Clippers, it's taking 45 to beat us in Utah, and it was just by three points. We had a chance to tie it at the end. We had a possession that we could have made a difference. So the Clippers are saying um, we didn't play our best game, Paul George or Kawhi Leonard, and we had a chance. I think they're going to feel okay. You just mentioned Ty Lu. We know that Earl grew up with them playing in the same gyms. Now we'll take a listen to the head coach of the Clippers. That's what I felt was right for our team. But what? That's what I felt was right for our team. I'm just curious, what, what maybe you may have saw out there that you thought was. I 